You're talking about how he kind of shut out Oceania. It didn't matter side. what his teammates did. He just won the game. Yes. That uh, was which, how it worked. I mean, there is room for uh, picks like Fiora and that that are able to kind of push the tanks back down it, uh, before they can ever get tanky enough. There is room for that. We may see people try play that style, but it's a lot more difficult. Well, Porky, see what he wants to look at. LeBlanc it is going to be banned away from Seiya, interestingly yes. enough. Yes, and what that tells you is Turkey put LeBlanc as a first pick status. Yeah. Because they would normally like the LeBlanc, but they feel like Latin America North would be taking it away as their first pick. Some people have been talking about that, but we haven't really seen that settle properly yet. With our two-game sample yes, size exactly. Stress. LeBlanc permabanned for all of 6.23. Hasn't had a look in the entire time. Vayne as well, just off the rift for all of these two games. So we are seeing so some consistency. Yeah, Lee Sin um, as well. So Oddie not going to be playing that one. So we still have other junglers available. Nidalee made it through last game and Elise. And neither were picked. Yeah. Neither were picked. Uh, so that, that was a bit of an interesting one because we were still expecting them to be up in the, the top echelon. So now do we look for mid laners? The rise is up still, but that I think was more against Kira. That is true. Uh, that in is the true. last game. Quite a few different options. Didn't see the Rengar at all. Syndra is going to be the final ban here from Latin America North Ooh. on the blue side, interestingly enough. We'll see what Seiya actually wants to look for. The guy's a Cassiopeia player. Yeah. When I last saw him, but Seiya's, I mean, he could possibly play Twitch. So the dude in the 1v1 tournament dominated people with it last year. There, so There's a little difference between the 1v1 <laughs> tournament and... Uh, I don't know, man. This is IWCA. This is about trying new things, experimenting, figuring things out. And you know you were talking about the rise that he's going to be banned away here by Turkey. And where does that leave us? Like... It, in days gone by, or, or worlds, you'd be looking now at like a, a Cassiopeia or a Vlad matchup. Yeah, hope so. Um, that would be the likely mid lane matchup. Do we go now to AD carries and look to lock something in? In the last game, we saw low priority on that. There's a lot of junglers available. Yeah, that's true. Last yeah. game, the Syndra was the first pick. What is the one that slots into second priority? This is the, only the second game stress. It's okay. We're not supposed <laughs> to be able to predict exactly what is happening. At this particular point, we are allowed to go on that roller coaster ride and see what these guys do want to do because there are still definitely a lot of champions that they do have the opportunity of playing the, that are very, very strong. I mean, something like Nautilus could be an opportunity here could for Pocky be. or might grab that Poppy. We saw tanks just be so, so strong or tanky champions just in general. See whether they go that way. No, Karma Ooh. is going to be the option and was banned in game number one. So yeah. now going to be snapped up here by Nuzul or potentially Seiya. So Karma for a very long time now, that flex potential. If Turkey don't want to play a tank style and are anticipating Latin America North playing a tank style, you could pick the Trundle first rotation here and flex it. Yeah. Obviously very, very good at dealing with uh, any kind of tanky champions. So could still have prominence in the top lane. Um, I think that Crystal should pick Rek'Sai. You think Crystal should pick Rek'Sai? I don't think because that's a bad idea. But... I don't think I've ever seen Crystal not play Rek'Sai. The dude that's, was a, that's just true. a huge fan of that champion. It was Rek'Sai Gragas when I last saw him play, but didn't really keep up with the TCL. We'll see what he has been doing on Aurora. <laughs> but Jin oh, being looked at, this is interesting. Go. That ain't, because that's exactly what I was talking about. It's not locked in yet. There's still a chance. Happen, mate. We got, <laughs> we got five like seconds to go. And uh, look, if this is his wheelhouse, yeah. oh, there it is. Locked away, Crystal. Most certainly on comfort here for our first Summoner's Rift game for Turkey. And with the Jin picked up, very different bottom lane setup here to our first game where we had Ash and Ezreal, a little bit more passive. So Jin looking for that lane prominence. I'm interested to see where the build will go because yeah. obviously with the lethality changes, the armor penetration, some people are talking about going for the old Jin build where you build more towards critical strike. The essence raver for the exactly. reduction, things like that. Exactly, you start going that way instead. So Latin America North, the playing field is open. And Oddie's oh. going to Grab yeah. it. Ivern has been locked away. Brushes are going to be created all over the place. Daisy running around. <laughs> Not sure how smart she is, but she's certainly going to be on the rift. And we'll so, see how he's going to be able to play this one out. We have seen a very small number of competitive Ivern games. Zanzara was one that played it, we mm -hmm. talked about. Uh, he actually didn't do a whole lot, and the team just kind of won around him. Uh, we'll get into Ivan's kit throughout the game, but very, very different jungler. High crowd control early on in the game. That Q really will lock people down. And comboed with a Caitlyn, perhaps, if we see that bot lane level 3 gank off Red and Krugs, if that's possible, you know, we'll just maybe end up seeing 
<laughs> Ivern go through. That's an interesting one, actually. I haven't seen too much Ivern since the uh, the croaks change. Yeah, exactly right. We'll see whether he's just going to be out. He'll, he'll just nurse that camp. I mean, it doesn't even really matter. He doesn't hurt anything in the jungle. So the fact that it just respawns over and over again, I think it's just, just going to disappear. But I don't actually know, to be perfectly frank. It's Rusty that's the Ivern guy. <laughs> <laughs> just leave it all to him. But we are going to see Dumbledo Dumbledoge's Bard, which I'm so incredibly excited about. He played it so, so well earlier this year at MSI. Zeitnot is going to take away the poppy. So pretty standard looking Turkish team composition here. Elwind going to be on that uh, tank towards the top side. Now Latin America North to round things out. And look, Seiya often plays crazy stuff. I just really want Latin America North to just put a massive spanner but in these works. Then so has Porky. I, maybe not so weird stuff, but he played at some Echo Top when nobody else really was playing it later. Yeah. He, he played a bunch of, uh, of the Na as well in his most recent games. Those were back in August, so a bit of a different meta as well. So I, I wonder where he's going to go now after not having been on Summoner's Rift in a competitive stance for a very long time. Yeah, it has been a long time. Ten seconds to go. He does have to make up his mind. Okay. As Trundle makes a heck of a lot of sense against Poppy. Yep. was sort of the standard pick into it at Worlds and seems to still be working out here. As wouldn't be able to actually utilize the uh, Courage of the Colossus as much unless he can get that sort of little pop-up on uh, the pillar. But what he lacks in that respect, he's now going to just steal away. I, I, I guess probably still Grasp of the Undying. Uh, I haven't seen too much yeah. Trundle in the top side, but obviously the ability to steal resistances kind of it will weaken the enemy rather than make himself stronger. So if we're going old school, or at least on the old uh, meta, you'd be looking at Vlad here for the middle lane. Oh, I like this option, though, from Naru. He is a legacy Oriana player, as yeah. most people are, to be perfectly honest. It's not, <laughs> it's not exactly uh, a ridiculous thing to say, but makes a lot of sense given the fact that they do have some decent delivery systems, what with Magical yep. Journey possibly being able to help him out <laughs> as far as getting a, a ball into the right position for Elwind or for Crystal. So just a solid team comp coming out of Turkey and a lot of interesting stuff from Latin America North. But their siege potential is out of control. Disengage, also pretty ridiculous. So if Latin America North can make Turkey play their style of League of Legends for this game, it should be in a very good position. But we've spoken about this Turkish squad. I mean, most of these guys have a lot of experience playing with one another. Let's see whether they are going to be able to make it work here in this new composition of Dark Passage players that they have. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's not quite true. Really. Latin America I North. say it a lot, but it's not quite true. A lot of later game potential with the Cassiopeia, with the Caitlyn as well. You're talking about that siege potential. Yeah. A lot of threat there. A lot but of headshot potential as well with brushes yeah. being able to be created everywhere. Yeah, that's one of the combinations that we haven't really seen mm -hmm. too much in competitive play. But over on the other side, obviously team fighting a major strength of Team Fire representatives from Turkey here. So one Oriana Shockwave, we've seen it time and time again turn yep. games around. So most certainly change the fate of that battle. And they just have so many big, beefy members, which we saw the CIS were able to utilize very, very effectively. I mean, that Rek'Sai Poppy combination is so, so strong. We'll see whether they are going to be able to do it. But make sure you get on Twitter. Tweet at LOL Esports, hashtag LAN win if you think that Latin America North are going to be able to take this one, or TUR win if you think that Turkey is going to be able to get themselves the victory. I personally just want to watch what Ivan can do because <laughs> I haven't seen it in a competitive game for quite some time. Of course, there was like so, one game that I saw from like Southeast Asia or something so like that where some fun stuff was happening. There was only one other game that I saw, and we were doing the uh, the Ragnarok qualifiers for uh, the, the, uh, the DreamHack finals for the... European Challenger Series open. Uh, and honestly, yep. so we saw an Ivern support paired with Mordekaiser. So I'm not really that holding it up in the standings. I am very interested to see some of the unique interactions, uh, hopefully, that Ivern will give. So Ivern doesn't attack the jungle. No. Which a lot of people will be confused about if you haven't played Ivan. Uh, he simply marks a camp and then comes back 45 seconds at the beginning of the game later. That will go shorter and shorter throughout the game. Um, but you're about to see. Um, yeah, just throws out a root caller there as he's Ooh. dancing around. And you can see how long that lasts for. How how large the projectile range is, how long it lasts for. He's such a jangly weirdo. It's amazing. Oh. <laughs> So loud as well. I mean, I feel like it should just be Ivern Cam. Can we just have Ivern Cam, guys? So it looks like Ivern starts on blue side, so you won't have that uh, gank towards the bottom side. I haven't had the opportunity to see a, a whole lot of Ivern, so I don't know yep. his specific interactions. I would assume the fact that Krugs don't respawn 
Um, I can actually feel it will be Rusty, difficult. by the way, on the analyst yeah. desk right now, just Probably. ready to create this massive segment on what Ivan can do. So he, don't necessarily feel like we need to say everything, because he does like to think that he is an expert on the champion, and I agree. So, Dude, this is, very, is the mark. Good. And then what Oddie can now do is come back to this a little later in the game. Uh, note that if you smite a marked camp, you will automatically uh, kill the camp as well. So I'm really interested to see Oddie's pathing here because first real time in competitive. At this rate, you can see he's only level one. Crystal is level two. So it costs Ivan health to mark camps, yep. and then he will end up getting it back as he comes through the jungle and is able to level up and get smite. So a lot of people have kind of prophesized that Ivan will get invaded level one and then end up dying. So we'll see how that ends up going for him. It's all about which one of these camps you are going to mark as this one now is able to be taken. Grabs that one easily. And we'll be able to get a bunch of his mana back. Really importantly as well, as this game goes on, you'll end up seeing that later on in the game, when Ivan takes, I think it's the second camp, he leaves behind a secondary buff for his teammates. So if you're blue side in bot lane, Caitlyn will get a red buff at around about that second buff timing. And anyone that has had a horrible experience on the bottom side of the map and a buff has gone over to a Caitlyn, I mean, Caitlyn with red buff early, is gross. Caitlyn oh. early <laughs> is gross, but Caitlyn with a red buff is something that I wish upon no enemy enemy of mine ever. It's just how it works. As Root Caller gets Oddie he's over this wall and smite he's going to it away. Yeah, and he's that's busy. what you want to do on Ivan. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Do you get into oh, that's the enemy fine. jungle? This is exciting. Use that smite down, get yourself out. Well, that is at least one steal as Crystal. Not going to be near that at all. He's probably wanting to give that over to Naru as well, which is what Rek'Sai likes to do when he's got a mana user in that mid lane for that first blue buff, but just not going to happen flat out this game. And that's the other side of it is um, a lot of people will say, well, why isn't blue buff so important? Well, typically the uh, <laughs> mid laners are going to get that buff anyway. Yeah. Um, so we'll end up seeing how the pathing changes. Uh, Ivan does, however, attack epic monsters, and, uh, you know, so he, <laughs> he's not useless at dragons. Still he's a friend of the forest, efficient. not a friend of the river. Exactly. Oh, wait, unless he... Uh, I don't think he can kill uh, the old Rift Scuttlers either, so maybe he is a bit of a friend of the river. I think he can. Yeah. Well, we're going to find out right now. Yeah. Possibly. Come on, Oddie. <laughs> Possibly. Come on, man. Don't let us down. Never mind. He's going to find his way in, Root Caller. Gigantic range. But a little bit too far pushed. But you can see how passive Ivan has to be this early on. Um, yeah. Not being able to get too well into the lanes. He got the blue buff, and that is kind of that's a win in his book. But from there onwards, it's kind of difficult to to really get into a lane and do anything. So there's some unique interaction with his Q. He's going to sneak into the back of the lane now, look to land the Q, and then it allows you to click on the champion and you follow up and you close the distance. So we'll see how this interaction ends up playing out. Yeah, if he throws down that shield, you know that he's looking to try and go in. However, not going to happen. Just some Coco being set up here by Dumbledore. As he grabs himself a cheeky chime. Chilling out in that tri brush, and Oddie's going to head back to base. Still has those double buffs, but has run out of jungle. That's what we've been seeing here on 6.23, is that jungle is just tend to run out of camps to take. Should probably look at trying to gank more often, but at the moment, I mean, there just don't seem to be too many options for Oddie, and Crystal's now lurking here on the bottom side jungle, just trying to find out where that cheeky little Ivern is. Find his way into a mid lane gank, potentially. Maybe have a look at, bot, have a look at bot lane, but there's nothing doing bot. And Say is getting pushed in. Yep, Say is getting pushed in. Rek'Sai is coming around the side. Important to note, we just saw Ivan hit level 5. That is the point in the game where the buffs will start being shared. So after this, any buff he ends up taking will leave behind for one minute. A little orb you'll see indicated through the jungle. And uh, speaking of through the jungle, Oddie's going... Oh, can he do it? Oh, He's just going to root call his way and actually just didn't want to. And you can see it doesn't actually aggro, um, but then Ivan doesn't get the second Krugs from it. So yeah. it's uh, one of the different changes. Krugs will spawn little minions unless you're Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> well, Oddie now going to make his way into the mid lane. Good ward there by Naru and puts himself on the right side of the lane. Say, so, yeah, quite low on mana. And at half health, just clears out the wave and gets himself back home. Looking to possibly pick up his tier, see what else he can grab as well. Very even on the farm as we check in on that particular score. Porky and Elwind just completely even there on the top side. First back has come in for Porky though and didn't use the teleport. So probably in a very good position 
is uh, this trundle. Mid lane, 51 to 51, 40, 47 to 47, slash 48 to 48. I'm not going to continue counting up real time <laughs> as Evan RL and Zeit not. We've also got a counter that does that already, Atlas. Yep. And it's, it's zero okay. to one. Oh my goodness, this is all letting the team down. Uh, you are infinitely less than Dumbledore right now. Oh, oh. forced out. Uh, was it forced out? I feel like that was a... It's just a lot well, of fear coming out of the little poppy there. Yeah, what, what Porky was trying to do there was trade with Elwyn to just try and get as much of his health down and then force him to take another fight. Elwyn was trying perhaps to, to wait until the subjugate had been used, but yeah. Crystal maybe needs to be a little careful here. They will, of course, now see the uh, Scryer's Bloom fly up through the map. Here's the important part. Red oh, gets taken God. away. Cassiopeia so with red buff now. Oh, can't quite get it. See, oh, you got to be closer no. to it. Doesn't get in there. Can Crystal pick it up? Don't no. think so. Uh, that oh, they're leaving it for Porky, maybe. Uh, yeah, but now they can block Porky coming. No, okay. They're not going to block it at all. He's just going to blast Cone his way so in. So all Porky's going to get in there. No, no. Move in. Red. Goodness me. Oh, they're all oh, Naru. Oh, in that really nice shockwave, though, to keep Naru safe. Takes the magical journey. Dumbledore is going to be able to keep him alive. Speeds him up. I mean, the ghost was already there, but Naru's so lucky to be alive there. Oh, Daisy couldn't quite pick up the kill there, but Naru was the shockwave that saves his life, as you said. Just enough Daisy. to stay alive. Where are we going, buddy? So, Oddie's getting himself a blue buff. Daisy's, Daisy's adorable, him. man. Oh, <sighs> dopey little rock. <laughs> I mean, the Sentinels, the little, sorry, yeah, the little Sentinels near the blue buff, no longer there, but at least we've got Daisy. Double red buff incoming. Ooh. Yeah, Oddie gonna shield himself up as Daisy makes his way in as well. The brush goes down, but I mean, not too much more is gonna be found here as Daisy, of course, able to throw out the knock up. Yeah, that'll happen on the third hit from Daisy. So, uh, ooh, attempt bottom side. Evan's gotta be careful here. Yeah, good trap from Evan though, as there's the last bullet, but not quite enough damage. Oh, oh my it. goodness, so close as Nazul is gonna block at least the deadly ooh. flourish as Dumbledore so close to dead and no first blood yet. Good oh. filler comes out again. Another root caller is, oh, that was fantastic. Stefan's presence there from Elwind. And he's going to be okay once again. So many close calls in this early game. Just not quite enough damage to get the kill on both sides. So this one's going a lot later on before yeah. much is happening. We're, we're still waiting for the Caitlyn to power up. Same with the Cassiopeia. Crystal will this time secure his blue. Lost out the first one yeah. to that Ivan. Not this time, sir. It's odd he's just going to grab himself the Krug camp. Naru is going to be at least delivered this one. So good news story for Naru. Slight change to Ariana, of course. You can't dissonance mid-command attack. It has to get to its location before you can throw that one out. So not necessarily able to get that surprise dissonance damage that I know I used to struggle <laughs> with just a little bit. And Crystal now trying his hand at some counter jungling. If, and if you're able to. If you can get this, it's fairly significant. Spires, Bloom, though, and Azul looking to try and stun him up. Not going to get out, but he's going to find it eventually. They would really have liked to have denied that double red buff play. Uh, Kaylin has to deal with the minions pushed into tower. There's only two or three left there, so she's actually going to leave them. All. Thought that it was a bit more dangerous with Bard sticking around than possible, but Dumbledore is only level five. No access to his ultimate yet, so he's even though he's around mid lane, can't quite see that play being available. And yes, we saw Evan Arrow actually did pick up that red buff. Yeah, so that's a red buff that was delivered to Porky on the top side of the map from the enemy jungle, and Evan RL grabs one on the bottom side of the map in his own jungle. So Oddie has just been able to supply everyone with all the buffs that they want. I'd love a statistic of how many red buffs there have been in this game for our Team Ice representatives in comparison to Turkey on the side of Team Fire. So Crystal got the first one, and then they haven't got any since, if I don't think correct. so, exactly. And then we've had two double reds, so it's five to one <laughs> at 10 minutes in. Just Unless my math is silly. terrible. Someone will no, correct us, I'm sure. You sound, it sounded like it could be right, <laughs> and that's the main thing. Definitely like that, as Oddie. Looking to poke his head in. They do have exclusive vision down here. Crystal's waiting in the wings potentially. And remember, this root caller has a very long range. Yeah. Oh, Daisy is available as well. Yeah. Not Crystal. Not going to be spotted. Oh my goodness, that vision so so close as Scry's Bloom comes in. No root caller to land. Is that not? What a damage. Yep. Just trying to push the wave out, push him back, and trying to get just a little bit more presence in the bottom side. But this game is. Uh... A little bit of a tense one for now. 
despite yeah. the buffs going over to Team Ice pretty it's 200 convincingly. 200 gold difference. It's nothing at all yeah. at the moment. Despite Oddie's shenanigans. Crystal's been farming up fairly heavily. He hasn't had to get into the lane to counter gank all that much. And honestly, the, the Team Fire laners have been holding their own for the majority when it comes to their lanes. So it's a very odd game. Um, Oddie cancelled that. Yeah, he's going to be able yeah. to get it here. And the stat is official. They've got three red buffs to one and also three blue buffs to one. As well. It's but just they're real greedy on. when it comes to the old that's amount of buffs. That's three of their own. What do you mean? Uh, as in, no, a whole game. Because there's doubles. Yeah. We've had two doubles, which makes four. Yeah. So they have to have had more than three. But if you're just talking about how like how much counter jungling Oddie's been doing, I mean, it's that's still a pretty cool that's stat. Fair. I thought. I mean, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't necessarily know. I'm just trying to inflate the you. stat. Here comes Porky, though. <laughs> well, not about that. As Porky is going to get caught underneath the tower. Good flash. Gets himself over, and the pillar's in a great position as well. Root Caller not quite long range enough. Thought, never thought I'd say that, because that ability <laughs> has a huge range. Subjugate just enough to keep Porky alive throughout that. Now Crystal's going to end up running into C if he's not careful. C is playing the very sneaky game, and he's not even there. Oh. Uh, our observers juke me. Yeah, um, totally juked. <laughs> Now he's going to find his way up there as well. Scryer's Bloom's going to spot out Oddie once again, clearing out some vision. Red buff gained. The second one here for Turkey. They're trying to claw their way back in in that department. Blue buff now going to spawn. Oddie should be able to get Dumbledore down. Dumbledore has his ult. Yeah, Dumbledore oh, finds his way into the top lane. And Porky, no mana, no nothing, nowhere to go, no friends. It's just an awful situation for the Trundle, and he's so dead. First blood comes in, and that's going to go to Crystal. Oh, bot lane, hang on. Is that not worried about Whoa. dying? What? He's still alive. Okay, calculate it. Never Just mind. About. Didn't even use his heal. Yeah, didn't even heal, didn't flash, nothing. Just was stays not alive. Is, oh my goodness, not going to get stunned is Naro as Oddi was making his way through. Good damage with the shockwave, but there's just so much composure on both <laughs> of these teams. No one seems to be scared of anything. No, nobody Apart is. Apart from Porky, who's terrified yeah. of everything. He's moment. he's scared of three people coming up to his lane. Yeah. TP coming through, hang on. We've oh, seen Evan RL Evan. push up a little too far. TP in response, though. Yeah, and there's the Inspire for the extra movement speed. Dumbledore, not quite here in time. Magically journeys his way out as Porky. He teleported exactly like you said. Good stun from Dumbledore. That's why they call him the God of the Bard. And he's locked down Nazul. Porky, he might die one more time. There's the verdict. And Elwin's going to be able to knock them up. Nazul the first to go. Porky in trouble, but he's kept alive by the subjugate. Daisy super mad here towards the bottom side. Looking for that third auto if he can get it. Root Caller doesn't land. Now Porky has oh. to be careful. He doesn't have any tanks. That's just yet, but good shield comes down from Oddi. In fact, this shield composition is something we haven't necessarily spoken about. See ya. Oh, there it is. See ya. Um, see you later. That's going to be <laughs> Turkey grabbing that kill. He's just a little bit too far up. Just being too far up for the rest of the fight. That didn't have his ultimate quite available, and neither did Naru for the majority of that. But it didn't seem to matter because Turkey are going to push forward now. It. You know, it's inconsequential how many buffs went over to Team Ice in this game because they're laning, they couldn't really get enough of an advantage and all of the fights so far have really gone in Turkey's favor. Yeah, all of the money seems to be going towards them now as well with all of these kills that are going down. It is going to be a 1,200 gold lead. And this Ocean Drake looks to be able to go over to Turkey quite easily. And I just like to think that it's all about Dumbledore. <laughs> the guy gets himself towards the top lane, helps grab that first blood. He's able to orchestrate that last battle with this incredible Cosmic Binding. Have a look for it here in this replay. Yeah, good double binding after Elwin looked to start this fight. It looked to be going back perhaps against the Turkish team here because Porky comes into the fight but loses so much of his look health. The double, the double stun there was beautiful by Dumbledore and then catches Nazul with the ultimate at the same time. Kaelin Trap's not quite doing enough in this fight. As you can see, a lot of the Turkish team kind of dancing around them and from here Daisy just gets kited back slowed down Elwin that's fairly important that he got that slow because from there Daisy never was able to get that knock up ended up dying to Zeitnot and then Seiya just kind of sticks around yeah and there's the flash heroic charge gets bonked into the wall and Seiya, destroyed. perhaps not the greatest play at that point sticking yeah. too far forward at that but that's fine he's just testing his limits a-OK. -okay. The gold is entirely tied up as first turret blood did go. 
Over to Team Ice, remember, Latin America North doing some work in the structural department. However, see whether they're going to be able to keep it up. And we'll see whether this uh, sort of shield slash siege composition, as Oddie is, of course, friend of the river as well. Ah, you were right. Yeah. Sorry, there we go. Thank goodness. Had to be right sometimes. <laughs> Took me about a two-year career to get there. We finally made it. As the brush is going to be put down here by Oddie. He's just pressing his buttons, helping clear out this minion wave. But it's going to be it. Bot lane did fall first. So we had first blood for the towers a lot earlier in the game. Yep. Oh, shockwave. Oh, Sia's Sia, gone. the last auto attack from the clockwork wind up as Naru locks up that kill with the help of his support as well. This tower is going to fall and they take the magical journey. The fadeaway jump shot to clear out the turret is beautiful here from the Turkish lineup. Four to zero in kills. They're doing so much work. Ghost has been put down. Porky dodges the stun. But he's taking a lot of damage. Has to flash to get out of the Tempered Fate. And there's the flash. Oh, no, oh, just oh, pops oh. him. See you later. That's why this guy was the prodigy from Turkey. <laughs> Instantly dead is Evan RL. Flash forward to make sure he could get the dissonance in time. But man, that was one big hit from Naru there on that kill. Evan RL was not expecting it. And uh, Turkey, they look to push onto tower. The minions are gone, though, so they will have to fall back for the next minion wave. Yeah, and that is 80% kill participation now for Naru on this Orianna. 3-0-1, now going to go back to base. We'll see what he picks up. I really hope it is a Rabidon's death cap, as we are going to see this kill one more time. And it's just the perfect combo. Clockwork wind up. See you later. Say it had flash. Uh, flashed late thought he had avoided the shockwave at first, and then we flash forward to the rest of the engage as Double Doge was looking to go aggressive. Couldn't quite catch the ultimate, but Naru says I don't need the ult to uh, be able to take people out, and just completely shuts down Evan RL. Uh, yeah, and uh, this just in, Naru in fact did 2,000 damage in 10 seconds. Wow. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Insane. The fact that he like perfectly like cancelled his auto attack animation to move his ball, the command attack, <laughs> just enough in order to destroy Say up before he could flash was silly. Impressive. I mean you could go over that like particular 1v1 in like very close detail and be very impressed with what Naru was able to do. But when we don't have time for that, we need to watch <laughs> Oddie be friends with the forest. And this friends, passive, he indicate. has been. He's, uh, he's got a lot of jungle camps from around the map. Has been stealing them away. But Crystal's been farming up fairly heavily himself. Um, yep. When you look at the, the farm leads, it's slightly down in the bottom lane for Zeitnot as well. But importantly, we were talking a little bit about itemization for Jin. Has gone towards that Essence Reaver. Yeah. Not the Ghost Blade with the uh, Dusk Blade alongside it. The changes to Lethality and Armor Penetration kind of removed a lot of the Armor Pen functionality for 80 carries when Lethality replaced it. As well as the removal of the attack speed on the active of Ghostblade yes, as well. I yeah. mean, Jin did get a lot out of that just in flat damage when you activated that item for his long-range spells. As now Oddy throws down his brush, is just going to blast it his way up here towards the top side to try and defend this turret. He's going to do so and avoids getting stunned. See on the bottom side of the map, it's Evan RL just trying his very best to clear out these minions as fast as possible, and he's going to be able to do so. But Elwind also just pulling himself further and further ahead in this farm. While well, Zaitnod and Dumble Doge are able to take down this outer turret on the top side of the map. Naru just being this one-man army in the mid lane for the moment, drawing over two members. Latin America North side. And that's the big problem here because, you know, we spoke about how good the sieging theoretically was for, uh, for, for Team Ice here for Latin America North. But Naru being such a big uh, threat in the middle lane is causing multiple people to come over and defend against him. And then Evan RL was in the bottom lane defending against Elwyn. So, Oddy, oh, your friends are getting killed. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they, can't really, they can't really hang on to their turrets at the same time. They have enough wave clear. Evan RL's got to be careful here. Most certainly oh, is. They oh, gets him. cancelled out of the net, but does manage to flash himself out of the way. Nazul, that is not a uh, friendly. Deadly flourish, but isn't going to be taken down underneath this turret. Naru's moving over to the top side, though, so should be able to slip in behind the turret if he wants to, but the minion wave isn't there, so they're just going to take out the traps. Yeah, they know that Naru's down. there, but... Well, the brushes are being set up. Oddie is trying to counter-siege them. 
underneath this tower as best he can. Miasma also helping out as Naru, stunned by the root caller, but no follow up there from Oddy. Dumbledore clears out the vision. So, not quite finding their way in our Turkey, as Porky and Elwyn just having a bit of a fight, but Porky flat out doesn't care about it. Ravenous Hydra's done, he's got his yep. lifesteal. And uh, yeah, Trundle ain't going to be moving anytime soon on the bottom yeah. side of the map. And just healing up from those minions from that trait. Uh, again, until Subjugate is used, nothing really happens in the Trundle lane when he's against... And when uh, it does get used, then Elwyn just bops him away. Oh yeah, just <laughs> ults him back, <laughs> yeah. says, okay, enough of this trait. And that's why there's a gentleman's agreement that we're going to biff each other a little bit, but we're never really <laughs> going to commit to anything because we just know how it plays out. Interesting. Going to grab himself the blue buff. And now the Ocean Drake is going to be augmented by this Mountain Drake that Turkey should be able to grab with no contest. I wonder whether that was a mistake. Um, not the dragon. Uh, something that happened in the jungle there for mm -hmm. Team Ice. Nazul was stood by Adi as he was taking red buff. So Nazul got the, the red buff. Oh no, Karma, for Karma with red buff instead. is the dream, man. I mean, it means just, you can keep slowing them down so they're definitely going to get rooted by it your It just your feels like maybe Evan RL should have been the one to get that. <laughs> I mean, typically, that's... Yeah, you're right. uh, I mean, I was trying my very best to justify it, but it was pretty weak at best. Oh. Let's be honest. The girl can dream. Holding out. Throws down his control ward. Doesn't quite have the vision range to see the things hanging around him. Stumbledore's just collecting some chimes. Crystal makes his way back into the jungle. That Scryer's Bloom not going to be utilized for the moment. They're very comfortable with their vision around this Baron pit. And in fact, no one going for the cheeky Barons this time. Maybe they weren't watching game one. Maybe not. Maybe they, uh, they, they weren't. Oh, oh Nizul, you are in trouble, buddy. Takes a lot of damage. Preyseek is not enough. And thankfully, that Trigger Seed was put down on top of him, gave him the shield, because then OK. Yeah, he's OK, will heal up now. Maybe that's what the red buff was preempting. Exactly. <laughs> he's going to get the health back. I'm not justifying that. That's uh, it. No, 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 no. I'm happy to go with it. Perfect. Porky realizes he can't Ooh, win the bang, trade not enough. without subjugate here is the problem. So now he has to back himself away. Poppy a little too strong now on two items. Evan R has to be really careful. Yeah, Naru does a lot of work. Finishes off the Riley's Crystal Scepter, actually. Instead of grabbing the uh, Ravidon's Death Cap, which I would have liked, there's <laughs> Oddy. A bit of damage is taken, but there's uh, the root call. The trigger seed comes in. Here comes Daisy to try and take down Naru. Redemption is there. But Naru is able to flash himself out of the way and offer some damage back. Zaitnok gets the stun onto Seiya, but no follow-up here available from Turkey. But it's the damage done to the tower now that is the, the key thing to look at because the Turkish team have almost got that tower to one hit, so they can they commit two people on the top side to Naru, don't even kill him, and now Naru is able to come back over towards uh, the top side again, gonna push it back out. The Turkish team are looking to go aggressive. Yeah, in goes Daisy one more time, Side not possibly out of position here, but does flash himself out of the way. Tempered Fate does a whole bunch of work as Daisy was snared up by it. Elwin now gets himself right into the front line, but Porky, he's so strong with this subjugate rolling, and Elwind is just gonna get munched on Crystal as well as Nazul. Just keeping Evan RL safe. Dumbledore off to the side looking for a flank as Naru says, I don't really care about what's going on in this particular fight. I'm just going to take down this turret. It's going to be two turrets now for nothing in response. That turret may end up falling in the mid lane depending on whether Zeitnot can look to clear this out. Naru is coming around the back with Dumbledore oh, though. Oh, this is a shockwave opportunity. Does have it back off cooldown as Seiya. Trying to get the poison in. There's the curtain call. They avoid the stun. Asaya falls. Naru just pegs a ball at him. Porky now in trouble. Has to flash out of the way. The deadly flourish. And Azul running for the hills as well. There's Evan. Oh, he's far enough away. Everything's going to be fine. But Seiya was super dead. This point of the game is looking really rough for Latam North because when you look at their composition, it's really just saying, well, we're going to try and wait till Caitlyn and Cassiopeia can just take this game over. And they've got a passive jungler now as well, a trundle that can't really defer the push that's coming from Poppy anymore. And there's no way of them co contesting this Baron. There's no way of them getting close enough. And from that trade, it's two towers, a handful of kills, and now a Baron buff going over to the Turkish representatives. Yeah, this just in though, Crystal did smite it to 32 health before it was taken down. So there's a potential opportunity there for a steal, but Oddy, of course, nowhere near it. No opportunity to get himself into the pit. So the smite was probably a little bit more relaxed. 
But Turkey, I mean, six to zero. It's a 7,000 gold lead. And despite the cool composition that ICE have put together, that Ladam North have put together, they haven't been sieging. They've been sieged against yeah. this entire game. A lot of it is just from how strong Naru has been at an earlier point in the game to say Say just has not been able to contain him at all. Yeah. This last pick, Oriana, has done wonders for the Turkish team. And it just is a threat that requires multiple people come to deal with. How do you Turkish feel about team? double oh, Hang on. Oh my goodness, the gang brush from Latham North as Elwind uh, has decided not to be engaged on. Curtain Call comes in, Nazul taking a whole host of damage. Porky and Oddy are okay. Redemption goes down for a little bit of healing as Daisy's just trying to keep them preoccupied. But Naru says, I got Baron buff, and uh, you guys just never seem to want to come towards me, so I'm going to take down your inhibitor turret. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Naru's just pushing away. Everybody just stood in a bush outside of the base. Now they want to go aggressive. Yeah, another redemption coming in there as Zytnot just gets exploded. Evan's able to pick up that kill. So much damage here as Porky will need to use his ult, but doesn't actually have it available. Oh, the Ignite's not enough, and the Trundle lives. And he's going to be just Zytnot falling down, but it looks like Turkey is still wanting to play aggressive. No Shockwave. Their damage is still available. Crystal and Elwyn, very, very tanky. And they are able to pressure down the inhibitor. Oh, Porky looking to, from the TP for the side. Magical journey. Oh, pillar. oh, that pillar was brilliant, but really good heroic charge. And Elwin gets himself out with the blast cone or the popcorn, or whatever you want to call it. Good stun from Dumbledore. You can always trust him to do something cool on the bard. Gets himself out of there. <laughs> but it's an inhibitor Elwin, going down. you cheeky devil. <laughs> <laughs> he just stole a red buff. <laughs> what? Just sticks around, realizes everybody else is... <laughs> you know, focusing on the rest of his team, and he should be able to get out of this. I mean, with the steadfast presence yeah, I was and just... the, the little <laughs> little legs, he'll run himself out. Yeah, of course, <sighs> they're natural sprinters. Very dangerous over Good short over short distances. Good over short Exactly right. He Your didn't even skills. recall. The rest of his team is now going to do the Infernal Drake. <laughs> uh, now goes back. Almost has his teleport back available. That's a huge minion wave up top. And uh, this variety bucket of dragons is going to be taken down by Turkey. His infernal drake for dragon number three is going to be picked up. Naru, of course, on his own for the rest of his team, running after him, saying, hey, buddy, I think it's time for some team fights. Yeah, and Let's you might this. be about to get one because the Turkish team, as they push up, will take down another turret. Of course, have the mountain drake that will help them with that. But Team Ice have got to be careful fighting in these chokes. Got yeah, to be careful shuffling. Those. Yeah, able to get a lot of stuns down as well. That's Oddy. Yeah, uh oh <laughs> is exactly right. I, I hear you like a brush in your brush. <laughs> <laughs> Porky's going to get stunned. Why oh. was he walking that way? The last command attack is going to be able to lock that one up. Crystal now looking for the double knockup and gets it. Oddy just gets sniped by the Curtain Call Sayer. Really good stun, but it's a double kill for Naru. And Tempered Fate is going to grab Nazul. Naru, oh my oh. god, that was close. Good flash by Nazul gets himself out. But I have a feeling that Shockwave would have got him but if with, he had enough. With Oddy and... Porky being a little out of position, they say, that's all, folks, as Turkey are looking <laughs> to push into the base. I mean, this has been a convincing Naru. win for the Turkish team. That was a cute little flash one more time, but Evan is going to survive this one. The autos come in. He didn't even dodge the damage as Naru was looking for it. There are redemptions going down all over the place. It's like they're playing against India and Civilization V at the moment, but the Nexus is going to be taken down. Turkey coming out so, so strong. Nine kills to one. And Team Fire looking super dominant. We knew these guys were going to be good. I mean, I personally was, had a lot of expectation. They did not disappoint this time around. Yeah, the Turkish team with a big win will pick up a win for Team Fire here. I mean, Naru, we talked about how good he was going to be on Assassins. Yeah. He said, I'll oh, give me a control mage. Just give me something that can hold down the mid lane. Oriana was the name of the game. And man, he just tore apart the Latam North team. Yeah, and he's really looking like that, that Turkish prodigy that we often talk about Naru as. Like, this guy, been playing for a very, very long time, started extraordinarily long, young, like we were saying. But that Oriana, just so dominant. We mentioned his aggression. He did not disappoint in that regard. You saw him on your screen right there. The man has looked very, very happy. <laughs> and certainly should after that game because that was dominance. And another shout out to Dumbledore, that guy's bard. Probably just should be banned. Yes, uh, probably. I, I'm pretty sure we have learned that from events gone yes. by. Uh, certainly have said that line before. But I mean, you know, we look at how aggressive Naru was playing yeah. out of the mid lane. 
we have to look at the other side, the Latam North team, how passive they were trying to play. With the Ivan only looking for jungle invades, could never really get into the lanes. Seiya was struggling in the mid lane, and Evan RL was trying to kind of just farm his way up to be, uh, you know, of any effect in this game, and just never yeah. really got there. Seeing this is windows, off. right? Yeah.